One of the most famous artworks stolen from Africa is the iconic and priceless Ife head, which has been in the possession of the UK police and has been in the news lately. Original Ife bronze heads, of which only about 20 survive, are believed to be about 700 years old. The stolen statue with the British police is worth millions of dollars and it is the subject of a dispute between a Belgian antique dealer and a Nigerian museum over its ownership. The bronze head, which was stolen from a museum in Nigeria in 1987, is believed to have been removed from Nigeria after it was stolen, when thieves broke into the Joss Museum. The thieves made off with nine of the museum's most precious treasures. In, in the 1980s and 1990s, Nigeria's museums suffered many such robberies. Staff from within Nigeria's National Commission of Museums and Monuments used to collaborate uh, in some of the thefts. Most of the treasures that were stolen ended up being sold to foreign art collectors. Now, knowing all of this, in 2007, the Belgian authorities held an auction of confiscated art items. Among the items sold was the Ife head, which the British police now hold. The mystery of how the head ended up in the custody of the British is way too convoluted to go into here because the sale by Belgium authorities raised a number of questions which one would hope the British would have answered by now. Two of such questions are, one, how did this stolen tre uh, treasure land in the hands of the Belgium authorities. Two, since it has been identified as one of the masterpieces stolen from a Nigerian museum in 1987, and it has, why are the British insisting on being neutral, even in this blatant case of theft, and they are taking so long to return it to Nigeria? Why? Welcome to the Sankofa Pan-African series. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee so we can continue to bring you this series. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And then please turn on your notification uh, button so you know when we have new episodes. Of course, share our videos with all your contacts. Now, the if ahead is however only a tiny chip of the iceberg when it comes to the troves of African treasures held captive all over Europe and North America. Neither is it news um, that during colonial rule in Africa, thousands of cultural artifacts were stolen. While some African countries have been asking for the return of their artifacts, major museums across Europe have only agreed to loan to loan some back while a few others have returned maybe one or two in recent times now france surprise surprise has actually been reported to call for thousands of african art in its museums to be returned to the continent only time will tell if France is not just talking the talk, but will actually follow up by walking the walk. It is, however, important for us to remind ourselves about some of the precious artifacts and artworks that are still being held captive abroad because about 90% 90% of Africa's cultural heritage is believed to be in Europe. French art historians 
actually estimate that uh, uh, Musi de Quabrani, uh, Jacques uh, Chirac in Paris alone holds about 70,000 African objects. And London's British Museum also has tens of thousands more. So let's start with the Rosetta Stone. The Rosetta Stone is um, about 1.12 meters, 3 uh, feet uh, 6 inches high steely, which was uh, made out of granodiorite rock. It is believed to have been broken off from a bigger slab with text carved on it. The Rosetta Stone has three columns of the same inscription in hieroglyphics, uh, Demotic uh, Egyptian, and Greek. Researchers believe that um, the text on the stone is part of a decree that was written by priests in 196 BC during the reign of Pharaoh Ptolemy V. Hieroglyphics were the formal writing system used in ancient Egypt. And hieroglyphics combine the, the, the drawn objects, uh, syllabic and alphabetic elements with some 1,000 distinct characters. The text on the Rosetta Stone has been the key used by researchers to decipher Egyptian hieroglyphics. Without the Rosetta Stone, Egyptian hieroglyphics would still be a mystery today. The stone was discovered in July 1799 by soldiers fighting with Napoleon Bonaparte when they were building an extension to a fort near um, the town of Rashid, which is also known as Rosetta, in the area of the Nile Delta of Egypt. Now, the British took possession of the stone under the terms of the Treaty of Alexandria in 1801 after Napoleon was defeated. It was then taken to England in 1802 and was given to the British Museum by George III, who is the direct ancestor of Elizabeth II, the present monarch. So that if Charles or Williams are truly as repulsed as they claim they are by some of the acts of their ancestors, this is one tiny thing that they can insist on returning as one of the ways of correcting the wrong of their past. So please return the Rosetta Stone to Africa. Uh, next, let's look at the popular Benin bronzes, which are a collection of a delicately made sculptures and plaques that were made out of bronze and brass. They were used to adorn the royal palace of the Oba in the kingdom of Benin until they were stolen after Oba of Oranwe Nogbaisi was ambushed by the British in 1897 during a punitive expedition against the Benin. Other artifacts scattered away from Benin were carved out of ivory, brass, ceramic, and wood. Several of the pieces were sacred objects, casts or made for the ancestral altars of past kings and queen mothers. Other innumerable royal objects were taken um, as a result of this uh, so-called punitive expedition by the British, and they remain scattered all over the world. The British Museum in London claims that many of the Benin objects in its collection were given to it in 1898 by the Foreign Office and the Lords Commissioners of the Admiralty. Well, in February 2022, two 
of the Benin bronzes were returned. And again, this is only a teeny weeny part of the treasures yearning to be returned to their home in Benin, Nigeria. The Bangwa Queen is another example, another stolen um, object from Africa. The Bangwa Queen is um, 32 inches tall. That's about 81 centimeters. It's a wooden carving from Cameroon. It is one of the most famous pieces of African art. And it has huge sacred significance for Cameroonians because it represents the power and health of the Bangwa people. Bangwa land is in present day Lebialem district in southwest region of, uh, of Cameroon. The Bangwa Queen was looted by a German colonel, uh, by a German colonial agent, Gustav Conrau, around 1899, before the territory was even colonized. It made its way to the Museum for Volkerkund in Berlin, from where it was brought, uh, it was purchased by an art collector in 1926 and according to the new york times um u.s art collector harry a franklin bought the carving in 1966 for a mere twenty nine thousand dollars and after his death the same artwork was sold at a sotheby auction for 3.4 million dollars. The, the Depa Foundation in Paris, France, now claims it owns the Bangwa Queen sculpture. And as at 2019, the wooden sculpture was still part of a collection of the Depa uh, Foundation, which was exhibited in the Musée du Quai Branly Jacques. Chirac in Paris. Um, next, let's look at the Magdala treasures. The Magdala treasures include an 18th century gold crown and a royal wedding dress, which were taken from Ethiopia by the British Army in 1868. The Magdala treasures were so many that some historians report that it took 15 elephants and 200 mules to cut the loot from Magdala, which was the Emperor Theodros II's northern citadel capital. The British claimed that they raided Magdala in retaliation for the detention of uh, their, their consul. Some of the treasures were later deposited at the Victoria and Albert Museum in London. In 2021, some of the literary uh, treasures were returned to Ethiopia over a century and a half after they were stolen by British troops. The return was facilitated by the Sherazade Foundation a British non-profit which purchased some of the Magdala uh, artifacts and turned them over to the Ethiopian ambassador to the UK. Now, the handful of artifacts returned include um, a handwritten Ethiopian religious text, crosses, and an imperial shield. But other prominent Ethiopian artifacts like the Tabot Axe of the Covenant, which is at the British Museum, are still being held captive by uh, British uh, institutions. One of the most disturbing possessions, which should be returned to Ethiopia, but is still being held by the British, is the remains of Prince Ali Mayehu, who died aged 18 in Leeds in England. Um, he died on the 14th of November, 
1879. It is believed that he was poisoned. He was buried at Windsor Castle uh, and the Ethiopian government has made several requests to have his remains returned to his motherland. Thanks for watching. Please support us through Patreon and by buying me coffee so we can continue to bring you the series. Subscribe and please turn on your notification buttons. Also, don't forget to share our videos with all your contacts. And of course, keep those comments coming. Thank you.